my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to our part two of the Kimberly Quilt Along. Hi everybody, welcome back to our Quilt Along. This is part two. So hopefully those of you that are sewing right along have some blocks. Say hi, hi to Mr. HP. I See lots of comments Hi, about his playlist. You're enjoying it, grooving along with it, singing, dancing. I have it on here too, by the way, and I am singing and dancing too as I'm working. So we're going to start with, it's been amazing to see all of your inspiration and your photos that you've been posting in Gudrun's Quilt Crew on Facebook, our, our closed group. So everybody, if you're not there and you're on Facebook, please join us in, in Gudrun's Quilt Crew. So I thought I'd show you some of the great photos that you've been posting there. It's not all of them, there's a lot. I just picked a few. So this, this little guy is working right alongside Amanda. Probably very helpful, or not, I don't know. Um, here are some more blocks. We have Delina's blocks, he's got a couple. These were posted you know, right away after we went offline, so. Uh, here are Donna's uh, steps. This was so beautifully arranged. I loved it. Then we have Helena ready to go. And then Jackie's blocks. Beautiful. And then we see Jan's amazing view. I think she's sewing on a porch with friends. It's beautiful. Uh, and she's got some blocks got done. Jan has got a beautiful setup. I like it. Why not? <laughs> And there's Kim ready to go, all organized with some energy in a cup, I see. We have Linda's blocks working on some bodacious, looks like, beautiful fabrics, Halloween-y. And check this view out. This is Pamela. Look at where she's, she's sewing. I think this is somewhere, I don't know if it's in the UP. It's, I can see some locks going on. Then we have Sandra working on Halloween as well. This is, uh, this is, oh, what is this one? Halloween Whimsy? Halloween Whimsy. That's the line. That's the bundle. And then this is going to be gorgeous. Sandy's blocks from Midnight in the Garden. Love this. Love how it's turning out. Then we have Stephanie, some beautiful bright blocks there, or parts, block parts. Looks like some tulip pink. And some more tulip pink. Sue's really vibrant blocks are coming together. Um, and then Susie has one of the best views in the world. Look at that up in Oregon. And oh my God, looking out on the, on the sound. I love to see your happy faces. This is Deb sewing. Uh, looks like a, with a friend. Great setup. And then we have another couple of friends, Gloria, and I believe she's sewing with a newbie. So welcome to, to the GE world, GEZ world, working on Kimberly. And there we have Karen and friends. Awesome. I love this. I love the happy faces. Beautiful. And one more. Kathy is also sewing somewhere in Wisconsin. The sunshine outside and sunshine in, in your faces. It's just beautiful. Love, love, love it. Thank you for posting pictures. Keep them coming in the crew. I, we're able to see them there as we go along, so we love that. And we made ourselves a little cherry bomb. Cherry bomb mimosa, so cheers. Cheers, honey. Good work, one down, and now we're on to our part two. Mm. Before we go there, Let's talk about our winners, our door prices. I know we don't really have a door. You're not walking through our doors, but virtually you are a part of it. So let's see. We have one winner from, drawn randomly from Facebook comments and the other one from YouTube comments. Let's see who is our winner. Oh, did you do a drum roll? Okay. Mary Sue Carl is one of our winners. So congratulations, Mary Sue. Just all you have to do is send an email to help at GE Quilt Designs. And to claim your prize, we need to have all your information to be able to get you your prize. And the second winner for part one is Alita Schaefer. Congrats, congrats. Again, send an email to help at GE Quilt Designs and we'll get you your prize. 
um, next week. Get you your prize next week. All right, I see some great, uh, great progress on your blocks. And like I said, it's okay just to have a few blocks done. All we want is just some blocks done. So now we're moving on to part two. So if you're doing Kimberly 1.0, that would include trimming of the blocks and continuing from there. And this part also includes if you want to take a step and try your try uh, 2.0 or 3.0, this is where we make that decision. So just I'm going to play the video for you first and don't do anything yet. And I'm going to show you how you can easily audition your blocks before doing any cutting. You can audition them for both versions before making that decision. So let's check out part two of the Kimberly book. Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through part two of the Kimberly quilt. So now that we have our blocks done, you might not have all of them done, but because I like to make a few blocks and then do my trimming and then keep going, here is where we're at. We have our blocks done from uh, taking you through step four of the construction. Now, at this point, you have to decide if you want to keep going with series one or version 1.0, or if you might want to step out and do either 2.0 or 3.0. So I'm going to start if, with uh, 1.0, so the original Kimberly. The next step for that is really just trimming up these blocks. So I'm going to do that with this yellow one and see it much better. So of course my favorite tools for trimming is the Stripology squared ruler just because it's easy to maneuver. Uh, you can also use the XL of course and it'll be the exact same measurements and uh, lines on the XL. So what we'll be using is the black lines. So squaring this to nine inches. So what we want to do is center that black nine inch square on our block. Not going to be much to trim here, but you want to ma make sure that you center it. So I have placed an arrow here on the center slit and then across this way, just as described in the pattern. So I have this line hitting the four, uh, this slit and this line hitting the four corners of that center square square and a square. So now I have it centered. I'm ready to make my first cut on the two sides. And then I just turn my block, move my pieces, and realign so that the now that the top and bottom are trimmed, I can just align the bottom black line here find that center and do my second two sides. There it is. And we have our perfect Kimberly blocks. So you want to trim all your blocks to that same side size. Now, if you are having trouble doing nine inch blocks, you know, you can always go down to the next size, go to eight and a half because there's plenty of room here to work with. So maybe if you were working with squares from a layer cake or a pre-cut of any kind, you might not have ended up with perfect squares. So if you have to trim it down even further, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's just gonna make your quilt just a tad bit smaller. So that is the 1.0 next step. If you wanna try in either of the other, here is where we go from there. So let's start with 2.0. So I have another set of fabrics that I'm working with. So I have two blocks here. I have dark on the outside and dark on the inside. Now, as you can see, it's not the same fabric combination because I want to mix things up with this one. So you want to take one black that has a dark center, one black that has a light center, and we press them opposite. So away from the light center and towards the dark center. So when I lay these on top of each other, all the seams are going to nest nicely. So you can just kind of feel them all nesting. Sometimes you're not able to line up all the corners, but you know, you feel where you are good enough. 
and that's where we end. So what we want to do here is we're going to cut these apart diagonally. So if you have directional fabrics and you want them to be staying this way, you want to make sure that the diagonal that you cut is always the same. So I'm going to be cutting uh, this way, just like this. So I'm going to turn all my blocks clockwise in this case. So you can do two things. You can just line up a ruler corner to corner and make a cut. I like to use the outermost slit on my ruler just because when you're up against the edge, sometimes your cutter tends to slide off and then my block is ruined. So instead, if I use a slit, then I know my blade is gonna stay in the slit and it's not gonna veer off. So what I wanna do is that outermost slit, I wanna just align that corner to corner diagonally like this, but I also check something else. I also check my horizontal lines. Are they aligned with the sides of the center triangle? So you can see now that I aligned them. The slit went off of the corners just by a thread or two, and that's okay. I'm just gonna split the difference and make the cut because it's more important to have these um, horizontal with the seam than being perfectly on the corners. So here is how I have them cut apart. And now you can see I have a dark version and a light version like this. So we're gonna sew them together like this into two different blocks. And the beautiful part is once we lay these on top, all of these seams are gonna nest. So you can pin these right here on these nest in these two corners and we're just gonna sew this diagonal seam. Same with this one. And so, so you can choose to mix up the colors. So as you can see, I have four different fabrics in one block. Or you could of course have used the same outside fabric here, same inside fabric here, so there'll only be two fabrics in each block. That's just a personal, personal preference. I like to mix it up. So you wanna sew these together and then we're gonna press. When we press, we wanna press towards the dark fabric that's on the outside, just as shown in the illustration. So when we sew this part, we wanna press toward the darker fabric on both sides. All right? So that is the next step for version 2.0. Let me take you through the version 3.0, which is similar. Of course, we start again with two regular Kimberly blocks, like I have here. I have the opposite fabrics, dark in the middle, dark on the outside. And again, I'm just gonna stack them up right on top of each other and make sure that all those seams start to nest, fall into each other like this. And then we are gonna be cutting these apart, but now we're just gonna cut them vertically. So again, what I wanna do is take one of the slits and align it with the corners of that inner square. So corners of the inner square, but before, I make the cut, I also look at my horizontal lines. Are they parallel to the edges of the block? And they look good to me. So now I'm gonna make that cut through the slit versus outside of the ruler. And if you uh, are working with regular rulers here, then you can just use the outside of the ruler uh, lined up with the corners but in this case, I know I'm not gonna mess up on my cut. So here we have them cut apart. We're gonna switch them around. So I'm going to be sewing a dark center to a light center so that we find this half square triangle in the middle and then the opposite. So you, if you have directional fabric like I do, you will end up with one that has a right side light and the other one has a right side dark. So now we're just gonna sew this straight seam down. And again, beautifully, all the seams are gonna nest. So you're gonna 
feel these coming together, you want to pop a pin in here and a pin in here and just sew these together. Same thing with this one. So I want to show you a little extra tip with this particular version, the 3.0 version. Because we press them opposite, you will find that there's a little bit of thickness here in the seams where they come together. And you can actually go right in here and pull out little bitty triangles and get rid of them on the part that was pressed towards the center. So here's another one. So there should be one on one on one side and two on the other. There. And then on this side, it's always on the one that was pressed towards the center. So there they are. So you can pull these out. That will eliminate the bulk in that seam. So stitch these down. And then you're going to press towards where the dark is on the outside. You want to press towards this part. So this way gets pressed this way. And then this block gets pressed this way. So there it is. That is our version 3.0 next step. Well, there it is. And yes, it is decision time because if you want to try or think about doing versions 2.0 or 3.0, now you have to make the decision. So before you do any trimming, if you're doing 1.0 at this stage, you're ready to trim. But if you're going to continue on, you're not going to trim before. You're going to cut and sew again before you, we always finish off with the trimming. We don't trim along the way, usually don't. All right, so uh, one tip I wanted to show, I showed you how when we're cutting these guys apart to use the slit versus the edge of the ruler. And it's really great to do that because it really eliminates all of those accidental whoopsies going off of the, because we have to hold the cutter up against the ruler. In this case, we're safe just being in the slit as long as the slit is lined up correctly. So one little tip I wanted to add, if you're going to do that, if you're right-handed, you want to use the furthermost to the right slit. So I would, if you're doing a lot of these, it's really great to just emphasize that slit with some stickers. So I would put a sticker that's nice and bright on that last slit. If you're left-handed, it's easier to use the first slit, so the furthest slit to the left, because you're going to be cutting with your left hand. So that makes it easier. So either way, put a slit, uh, put a, a, a little sticker there to know where to cut and where to line up mostly. All right, so I wanted to show you a way if you are not sure if you wanted to do the other versions. So I wanted to show you a way how you can do that. So you want to grab matching squares and there's two ways to do this. You can do it kind of matching up like this or you can mix up the colors. But you always want to have a dark center and a dark outside, whether it's matching or not, because one is pressed to the center and the other one is pressed away from the center. So again, if you're using directional fabric, you just turn them right side. So as you're looking at it, it's looking the right side up. So to audition this, to see how it looks, all you do is take one of them and fold it in half. So this is for 2.0 fold it in half, and this is what they would look like. So you would, you could try uh, all your few different blocks, lay them out, take a photo with your, with your phone, because it's always different to look at it on a small scale. Now this is if you were to match up the colorway, so in each block there's only two fabrics. In my 2.0 version that I'm working on, I'm actually mixing things up, so mine would be looking something like this. So I'm mixing up, so in each block there will be four fabrics, two lights and two darks. Um, and so that's a choice. You can decide what, whether you want it extra scrappy or not. You can do that. And I got a question to show the difference between layout one and layout two. We will go through that in the, in the next part, but because now we're just working on the blocks and going from there. So this is... To, uh, this is, so this would be looking like this. I wanted to show you if you had another set of blocks. 
So that's what they would look like, mixing up the colors. For 3.0, similar, we have the two. For mine, I chose to match up in this case the same fabrics. So how you can audition that, because I have a lot of uh, directional fabrics, I'm choosing to stick them together. So in each block, I'll only have two colors. So just fold one in half and then lay them out this way. And so you will get one block that looks like this and then one block that looks like this. All right. So let's take any questions on um, this part. And I can go through some of the things again if they are unclear. Um, Mr. HP, do you see any questions? There's lots and lots of comments. Thank you. Lots of love. I'm looking at two, I'm looking at Facebook and I'm looking at YouTube here. So I'm trying to trying to stay in touch with all of you. Um I'm just wondering what pattern to go with. Yes. <laughs> love 3.0. I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. That's a decision you have to make. And this is why this, these three versions that I have going here are my Kimberly's number six, seven, and eight. <laughs> I can't stop. They're so much fun. So much fun to play with. So, no questions? Ah, I love it. I'm so, sure yes, I is. promise you, this is one that you will go back to and make again and again and again, whether it's the 1.0, super quick and easy. Okay. If you decide to stay with version one, should you go back and repress the center seams? No, just keep them, because nothing will uh, match up. You don't have to nest any seams or anything with version one. So you don't have to do anything by repressing. Would you go over lining up the standard stripology ruler and block one? Standard stripology ruler. That's the same. So whether it's the squared or the XL, the same, just like I showed in the video, it's the same. We can look at it. So because we're squaring up to a whole inch size, whole inch size means we're using black lines. So it's the black lines here. And actually, if you put the XL over that squared, it's, I'm turning it wrong this way, it's the exact same. See, the lines uh, match up exactly the same. So we're using the black lines on this side. Remember, have the black numbers on the bottom. So whole inch sizes are black lines, half inch sizes are white lines. So that's how you can see the difference. And um, we'll go over trimming the 2.0 and 3.0 in the next part. But this is it for part two. Decision time, decision time. You can, uh, I think it would be kind of wild. Of course, you can't mix one and uh, one with the others because 1.0 has larger blocks unless you trim them smaller. And here's, of course, if you had any troublesome 10 inch squares, maybe from a pre cut, and when you start trimming, you can't trim it to the 9 inch, you're working on 1.0, just go down. Go down and get, do yourself a favor, just go down to 8.5. I know it's tempting to save fabric and go down to maybe 8 and 3 fourths. Just save yourself, save yourself and your sanity and go down to eight and a half. So then you would use the white squares trimming up to eight and a half. And we'll go over that in the next step when uh, we talk about the 2.0 and 3.0. All right. All right. Makes sense? Yeah. Nine inches for the 1.0. I saw somebody was confused. So just if you are following 1.0 in the pattern, it says very clearly, pause here and make your decisions, and then just follow the one that says your version. So version 1.0, just follow that. Don't be distracted by the others, and vice versa. All right. Awesome. So here's to you getting some blocks, blocks done, and now next focus, either trim or try to go a little further and take it down the 2.0 or the 3.0 road. I'm so, I'm so confused. <laughs> are you confused or I are people? I don't know which one to do. Are you confused or are people confused? Uh, me. Oh, just you. Well, there it is. Um, somebody was confused about all my fabrics, but just know I'm working on three quilts too. So it makes it easier when we start talking about my 
the different versions, and you can see I have different fabrics for each one. Yes, I'm doing this right alongside you. I got my sewing machine set up. So I'm going back and forth between answering emails, checking on stuff, and... We'll do yoga at the beginning of the next session. Yes, so yoga session, I think beginning of next part, Mr. HP is gonna take you through some yoga to stretch out. Don't worry, nothing heavy. You can just be right in your seat. Um, just to loosen up those sewing muscles and break it up a little bit. How does that sound? Yay! Yay! And remember, keep commenting because we have two more winners and we'll, for this part, and we'll announce it on when we kick off part three. So we will see you again at two o'clock. Two o'clock, everybody. Get some more blocks done, start trimming, or start trying the other versions, and we'll see you back here in about an hour and a half. Scowl! Cheers, everybody. We'll see you in a little bit.